I'm preaching. So if you don't care, it just means you are not a disciple of Christ. You have your own agenda. The moral layer of the Bible, of the word, is very, very important. But let's go to the fourth layer and let's dwell a little bit up there. The fourth layer is the layer of relationship. 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 You have a personal encounter through the word. Amen. I said one day, there is God. There is our God. And there is my God. That's the kind of thing we are talking about. All the initial layers, it was God. God is there. Then we have our God. Then we have my God. This level is my God. I now have a relationship. You know, there are people when you say, look, many Africans believe that God is there. Amen? Yeah, if you speak to the average African, in fact, it will be very difficult for an African to tell you that there's no God. If an African tells you there's no God, maybe he was not born here. We, they will all agree that there is God. But then, different dimensions. Hello? There is the church. There is our church. And there is my church. There is the pastor. There is our pastor. And there is my pastor. This is simple. So, you see, when I speak to people, there are things I listen to. There are phrases that tell me that this person is far away from God. You see, when people people say, you know, I went to church on Sunday and the pastor said, I'm opening your eye to something. I went to church on Sunday and the pastor said, it's a sign that this person is not really connected in the church where they are. It's a bonus point for all the ladies. Amen. Oh, of course it can be somebody say ah but because of the pastor the pastor no I, papa this one i don't agree with you that's fine it happens once it happens twice it happens for the third time you should be learning something from it where the person is is visible in church you hear the, the you hear the description my pastor said i like the way some people are looking at me <laughs> You know, some things are true, but it takes time to sink in. Uh-huh. Like, you have to reject it for some time, but eventually it will sink in. You, you will understand. The preacher. In, in fact, the people even say the preacher. <laughs> they, 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 are, they are very far away. The preacher. The preacher said, the preacher man said. <laughs> Mostly, this person is not serving in the house of God. So there is God, there is our God, but there is my God, my God. When you take the word of God, let me tell you something. When you take the word of God, there is a personal message to you. Are you able to hear that personal message? Are you able to hear that personal message? There are things that will jump out of the word of God to you and you you realize that this one is like custom made, it's tailor made. There are suits, but it's not everybody's suit that will fit everybody. Am I, am I teaching? There is a certain part of the word of God. Even the word I'm preaching now, even the word I'm preaching now, we are all having different connections to the same word that I'm preaching. And yet we are all coming to the same point by the Holy Spirit. That is the level. The level of relationship. That's the level that leads to salvation. And that's the level that leads to transformation. So don't just read the Bible as a history book. Don't consider your faith as just a moral faith. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. And that's it. So sometimes you see a lot of things that are, that are 
going on in, in, in the church. People are doing this, or we are using anointing, we are doing communion, we are doing washing of feet, we are doing it's like it's just activities. People, I don't I'm don't, I don't have a connection. This morning we'll go to the table of the Lord. It's not just you know, if you are hungry, there's a shop over there. Yeah. In fact, the Bible is very clear. When they had the Lord's Supper, the Bible said they had eaten. It said after supper, the Lord Jesus took the bread. They had already eaten. And then after that, they did, they did the communion. So it's not a, you know, I like, I like the, the, you know, the, the taste, you know. I like the taste. That's not why we are coming for, for the communion. You see, and as we are coming to the table of the Lord, for somebody, you are craving a relationship. You are craving a deep relationship. For somebody, you are looking for healing. For somebody, you want the Lord to speak for you. The same communion that we are coming to is ministering different things to everybody. Let me tell you, that is why you must have your Bible. My Bible is not for you. Because when you take your Bible and you look inside your Bible at the level of relationship, at the level of relationship. And those of you connected to me know that when we are reading the word of God, we are reading it at a certain level. It's not just at a moral level. Hello. Because when you read the Bible and then it said that, you know, it told some Israelites that there are some people kill everybody. Kill everybody. You know, once I was in an Islamic country, I was, I was busy preaching to somebody. Then the guy opened the Bible. Then he quoted a certain scripture. Then he said, they, they killed everybody, including women and children. And this is the religion you follow. <laughs> yeah, that's what he asked me. Then again, he said that you people every day blood. You, do you like blood? That's what he asked me. He said, do you like blood? But every day, you are talking blood. This is somebody who has read the word, but it has a, it has a, a, a certain level. I said, you need light. You need light. You need light. You can read the Bible in the dark. In fact, there are many Muslims who have read the Bible more than Christians. Shame on you and I. Shame shame that other people of other religion know sometimes they have read the bible but you know the difference with your two by four scripture you are at a certain level of relationship that's the difference when somebody hears the word jesus died there's jesus died for us in fact there's jesus died for the world then there's jesus died for us What's the third level? Jesus died for me. That's the level. So when I'm reading about Moses, what does it tell me? When you get to this level, you have started building foundation. <laughs> you have begun. You are now fashioning your word on foundation. Hello? Hello? At the, at the time of morality, yes, you have started some work. You, even at the science and facts level, even at the historical fact level, you, you have started some work. But, but, but at the relationship level, your foundation has really, really taken off. Are you, are you blessed? Player number five. The same Bible. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Let's read from verse 16 to the verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. The Bible says, Simon Peter answered, because Jesus was asking them, who do people say? Let, let's go to um, 13. Thank you, Jesus. 
Are, are you seeing this? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? Who do people say the son of man is? People. So let's see the answers. They replied, some say John the Baptist. <laughs> Listen to me. Give me your attention for five minutes. Let nothing disrupt you. I, ushers, there's too much movement for my liking. Give me your attention for five minutes. Some people said, Jesus is John the Baptist. This is quite surprising. Because Jesus and John the Baptist, they are just six months apart. So why would somebody say Jesus is John the Baptist? Because they are actually living in the same time together. Hello? Yeah. And then some said he's Jeremiah. And then some said he is one of the prophets. I don't know, maybe Obadiah, maybe Amos, Zephaniah, I don't know. But it's just one of the prophets. But what about you? <laughs> you have heard people say things about Jesus. You may have even heard me or pastor say things about Jesus. But what about you? Are you going to believe when I tell you that Jesus is Elijah. Because our, the Jesus we say from Israel, some people also believe he's from Ethiopia. Huh? Yes. There's another Messiah called Ras Tafari. <laughs> Where we get Rastafarianism. Rastafari. BHM member. Rastafari. It's a worship. It is not just a hairstyle. It is a worship. Their Messiah is Rastafari Makonin. He's from the, the last Ethiopian emperor. And that's what they believe. It's not just a it's not just a hairstyle, it's a lifestyle. It's a it's a it's a their 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 Zion is Ethiopia. So they believe that one day, just as we believe that there will be a, a heavenly and an earthly Jerusalem, they also believe that there will be an Ethiopia for them. That's their Zion. <laughs> they believe that the ark of the Lord is in Ethiopia. There are some people also say that Jesus is black, Jesus is blue. The white people have their Jesus and the black people have that. What do you say? You. You. Where do you stand? Relationship. I know him. Hello. Hello. Everybody that has met him, you have a compass in you. It's called the Holy Spirit. There is an internal compass for navigation. There is an internal GPS for navigation. It is called the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's why, that's why, it, you know, when they ask, where is it written? That's, that's the discussion of children. Where is it written? Uh, where has it been written in the Bible that we shouldn't drink alcohol? The only place they said no, na, membo, mabo, mabo, memo ye. No relationship. But what about you? He asked, What do you say I am? Amen. 
the next verse and what Jesus said I will introduce you the fifth layer my message will be over Simon Peter answered you are the Christ the son of the living God There are people seated here in this room who still don't know this. I'm praying for you that as I'm teaching that the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you and work on you and take over your spirit and introduce to you Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I surprise you if the Jesus in Matthew Mark Luke and John is all that you know then you don't know him there are some of us who, we, our understanding of who Jesus is is just what Luke wrote just what Matthew wrote. Oh, the things that Apostle Paul was talking about, the things that John was writing, you can't see most of them in the book of Mark. When he told us that, when John told us that the sound of his voice is like many waters. You, you, you can't see that in the book of Matthew. When he told us that his hair is as white as wool. When he told us that his eyes are like flaming fire. You cannot see it in the book of, of Matthew. And many times, many times when people talk about Jesus. They are just talking about the one that Matthew wrote about. They don't look at the one that John, that apostle Peter wrote about. When you look at the, the, the Jesus written only in the Gospels, you, Elijah, you may even say Elijah is more powerful. Because that Jesus was killed. Elijah, he disappeared. Nobody could kill him. He was so powerful, he disappeared. But that Jesus was killed. Praise the Lord. There's a dimension. Pardon me to say there is another Jesus. Nobody can kill him. Hey, how, how dare you? How do you even go near him? To talk of killing him. Verse 17. If you get this one. Jesus replied, Simon, you are blessed. Peter, you are blessed. Why are you blessed? This was not revealed to you by man, but my father in heaven. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Okay. You are blessed, Simon, son of John. Because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. <laughs> the fifth dimension of the world is the, is the layer of revelation. 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 As I'm preaching this word, I'm speaking as a human being. But the eyes of your spirit are open to listen to the Lord. And there is something you are able to catch. Ah. Revelation is not taught. It is caught. <laughs> In teachings, there is something that comes to you. We don't see revelation with the eyes. We see revelation with the spirit. Praise the Lord. Oh. 
Let's go back to King James, please. Uh, I'll finish this. The next verse is the beginning of your lifting and the beginning of your elevation. But I say unto you, as for you, you are Peter. You are just a human being. You have many weaknesses. You have flaws. You are fierce. You are Peter. You are Peter. And you, Peter, upon this rock. Some have said Jesus was talking about Peter as the rock. Peter cannot be a rock. If Peter were the rock, Ankayewu. Because when Jesus died, he went back to fishing. The rock. Oh, Lord, the Shande. Do you know why Jesus never gave up on Peter? Because Peter had the rock. He, he had a certain rock in his hand. Listen. There are some of you, you can roam to wherever. But because of a certain seed of Christ in you, you will always come back. You will always come back. Always. The Bible says that teach the child. You see the children in there. Teach them the way that they should go. And when they grow, they will not what? They will not depart. When they see, Peter had the rock. Jesus knew everybody, people could not understand. They were saying Jeremiah, Elijah, the prophet, uh, Peter was the one that said you are Christ you are Jesus Jesus said Peter because of this understanding you have you have a certain rock and on this rock this rock this revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord and is the son of God I Jesus I will build my church building can come up on one revelation that's why sometimes when you come to church i tell you that you need one word one word from god one word that peter caught is the reason all of us are here is the reason there's a church in nigeria is the reason there's a church in jamaica from this revelation on this revelation that jesus is the christ and is the son of god hey. one revelation can change a thousand generations in your family From here, Jesus said, This guy is going to lead the church. He's got the stuff. He's got it. He's at the fairly, yes. I pray for you that when you hear the word, and when you listen to the word, and when you look into your Bible, that you will catch rocks, rocks, rocks of revelation. 
Revelations are rocks and they form the foundations of buildings. I'm telling you, you will never serve in the house of God. It will become a border. You catch a certain rock. Many people, people don't give their tithe and they are nothing. There's no, no revelation. You know, there's one thing Apostle Tio always says. He said, Papa, when you preach, I get my messages from your preaching. That's revelation. Lord is opening our eyes. Yeah. The Lord is opening your eye. Yeah. And your delight will be in the things of God. This morning, um, as we come to the table of the Lord, my heart desire is that your spirit will open up. Yeah. And you catch a certain revelation. There are some of you that are called into ministry, you are confused don't know whether to go or to come you don't know whether to give yourself fully or whatever you have complete confusion you need a revelation hello you need a revelation it was one afternoon i sat behind my piano and i played you see that's why you need moments with god you need times on your own with the lord as i was playing by my piano and worshiping the Lord. I opened the book of Isaiah and I was reading. I love Isaiah. And my Bible has four versions in the same Bible. So usually when I read King James, I look at other versions. And there was a version called HCSB. One of the versions in my you need to buy Bibles. You need to invest Bible in Bible. Hello. Bible go a uh, ten million. I was say to be. Ten million. Yeah, I was say to sell Bible. If you see a five million. Who said one day we'll top Bible be a year five million? Hey, you didn't say amen. I was reading the thing. Do you have that version? HCSB. Check. And let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 7. I was reading Isaiah. When I go to verse 7, then I saw the scripture there. When I saw the scripture, then the Lord told me, this is the name of your ministry. They, they don't have it. Look for it from the internet or something. Revelation. Reve and upon that rock, upon that revelation, a church is being built to the glory of God. Your, the name of your business is in the Bible. Oh. Ha. The name of your business is written in the Bible. Your strategy is written in the Bible. I was shocked. Last week I was studying about vision. And the Lord. One more ever. Isaiah 60 verse 7. <laughs> and the Lord took me to. Ah. Uh, Jacob, when he went to the house of Laban, the Lord directed the guy, put a certain stick before the animals. Put it in their water. Put it in their water. And 
When the animals look at the sticks and they were drinking, they were producing the same thing on their face. I was learning visions. And the Lord said, put the vision before the people. It will be reproduced in them. And that is where the Old Testament, people drinking, animal drinking from water. How, how do you get a thing like that? How? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? All the flocks of Kedah will be gathered to you. The rams of neighbors will serve you. And go up my altar as an acceptable sacrifice. And I will glorify my beautiful house. That's it. I'm sure some of you didn't know. This is it. When I got, I was, I was by my piano. I was worshiping God and praying. Isaiah. When I got there, is it possible when you are reading the Bible, the Lord will say, stop. Stop. Your husband is called Stephen. Uh, you don't believe as many as believe you are receiving husbands from the Bible. You are receiving wives from the Bible. From the Bible. You, you will be there and be, be forming. What you... I tell my people, what you don't know is all the principles for life. All the principles for business. All the principles for your progress, for your marriage. They are written in the word of God. When you are reading the word, at the level of revelation, it will be jumping to you when you are reading the word at the word of revelation the holy spirit will be telling you this one is for you this one is yours this one pay attention this one what it means is this the holy spirit will explain the words to you when i got here so i will glorify my beautiful house hey meanwhile the king james is complete you go to king james and see whether you see anything close to beautiful house who kind of bible now who kind give us international blue no and no now kind I show back pocket. Look at what King James says. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Then go to HCSB. Just by a little bit more digging into the word diligence, praying and, and, and reading the word at a certain it, Is it possible that as you look inside the Bible, the Lord will tell you, this is the name of your business. Or the Lord will give you a strategy. The Lord will give you something from the Bible that will work for your business. That will work for your life. The Lord will give you something. May your eyes be open. We want to dine with the Lord and we, we want to ask him to take us deeper. The moral level is too low. The level of science and facts is too low. As for history, it's too shallow. You have a relationship with God. Maybe you are born again. You know Jesus. But there is a, there's another level. There is the level of, 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 of revelation. I can even give you a next level. There's a dimension of covenants. That's the next level. I, mean, I, will, I will have run out of time. I give, I've given you five. But the said dimension is covenant. Where it's not just revelation, but you move to take action based on the revelation that you have seen. But the action is not a one-time action. It's, a, it's an action you take forever. Based on the revelation of this scripture, I decided to commit my life to ministry forever. That's the next dimension of the word. Covenant. You are making covenants with the Lord. Committing forever. You are making decisions forever. I wanted to pray. We are coming to the table of the Lord. Lord, I need to be serious. I'm playing too much.